Stephanie, Patty, and uh, the rest of the Depression Center team, um, welcome to the to the our kickoff uh, retreat. We're all really excited about this next phase of the Depression Center, um, and really grateful that you've taken the time to join us and really provide input on um, how we can be most effective in in helping you and and um, having an impact. Um, we'll spend some time at the top of the meeting here. Uh, going over where we are, our, our motivations and, and high level plans, but really want to spend a lot of time um, in the second half of the meeting, getting input from you, getting um, through questions and answers and then in our breakout sessions. Um, but I wanted to start by um, looking back and, and really uh, thinking about what we've what we've accomplished and and we're we're celebrating the, the uh, 20th anniversary of the Depression Center. Uh, this year, and uh, it's uh, countless number of people have been involved and and really driven the depression center. But um, but I think the main force we can all agree has been John Graydon, who who conceived of and and founded the center, and and his vision and leadership have been um, integral to to all the different parts of the world and the community and 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 science that the depression center has touched. So. Um, later this year, once we can all gather again in person, we'll have a chance to celebrate properly. But I wanted to um, take a few minutes to, to thank John and to uh, uh, look a little bit about, about um, some of the work that we've done. Um, with, you know, with the help of, of founding donors like the Upjohn and, and Prechter families and with strong partnership with Dr. Dalek and psychiatry, uh, uh, John and the Depression Center you know, built the, the wonderful building that we have, um, helped seed the, uh, the National Network of Depression Centers with our um, Depression Center leadership faculty, helped you know, set a really foundational um, program in bipolar disorders, forged really strong links with other centers and clinical departments around campus, um, really advanced the, the science of implementing a lot of our findings into the field. Um, got ways of, of distributing our traditional and even newer tools into, into the hands of our patients and clinicians and uh, uh, helped in, in, in uh, a lot of different ways, particularly in helping junior faculty start their careers and, and build research programs. Um, I won't go through all the, the different programs and work that the Depression Center has done, but one important thread that I think runs through a lot of the work is, is how we've catalyzed important conversations and initially difficult conversations about depression, bipolar disorder, um, and mental health uh, throughout a, a diverse set of communities in our schools, our campus, campuses around the country, uh, uh, among our, our clinician colleagues in, in the health systems and military populations, and how, how that, that work over the, over the past 20 years has really changed how people talk about um, depression and mental health and, and really reduce the stigma in, in important ways. Our wonderful development team has been involved in all the all the projects I've talked about and, and many others. And um, uh, one of the important, really important things they've done is, is raise money that helped us uh, uh, award uh, over $12 million now in, in grants to, uh, to researchers uh, and, uh, and clinicians uh, across U of M. Um, uh, you know, I, I think I got my first depression center grant, a Rachel um, Upjohn Clinical Award, uh, what, like 19 years ago now, when I was a, a grad student, and it was my first grant and was really important in uh, how I thought about research and, and let me do my own independent projects and, and going around talking to people. Um, it's, it's really impressive how many people have similar stories about how a depression center award was important in, in their early work and, and career. Um, and, and so we'll continue and hopefully grow that work and, and a lot of the other work the Depression Center does. I think with the, the really transformative and, and generous gift from the Eisenberg family, um, the naming gift um, and, and new investment from, from the university in Michigan Medicine, we're, we're moving into a, a new era and, and have um, a real opportunity to, to uh, uh, take the impact we have and, and the work we do to another level. And, and that's what um, uh, that's what I'm really excited about, and and why um, I, I took this role and and 
and I'm um, really eager to move forward with our work. Um, sort of from a personal perspective, I, um, I'm lucky enough to have an opportunity to do really interesting and, um, uh, and fulfilling work in, in different domains through my own lab research group as the Associate Vice President for Research on Campus. Um, but really the reason I got into this work in this field and, and why um, you know, what I think about every day when, when I wake up is, is to really make an impact and to, because of my own personal experiences, my family and, and friends and experiences with depression, bipolar disorder, anxiety, and, and even suicide, to really find ways of, of reducing the suffering and to help people um, struggling in their families. And, and more than, you know, budget cycles and grants, that's, that's the real motivation. And I think because of a a confluence of factors, we really have a chance to do that with the Depression Center, and that's that's what excites me. I think um, most importantly, it's it's all of you that we have an incredibly talented and, and dedicated set of um, of staff, faculty, students who are who are really um, interested in working hard to uh, uh, to fight these disorders and and to make progress and and. Um, I think there's incredible potential in empowering all of you to, to do that work as effectively as possible, both individually and, and probably more importantly, collectively in, 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 in a collaborative way. And, and that's what um, I'm really excited about. And I think there's also, um, in addition to all of us, um, a, a set of, uh, of, of students and faculty and, and staff around campus who can contribute incredibly to the, uh, this fight against depression and, and don't know it yet, but we'll be part of the Depression Center and, and contributing to our mission. And I'm excited to to find those people and bring them into into a, into the family. Um, I think related to that, there's been real advances in in science and and science relevant to um, uh, depression, bipolar disorder that uh, in in the past few years in 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 terms of basic neuroscience and technology, data science and implementation science and it allows us to ask questions in, in meaningful ways that we weren't really able to even, even five years ago. And, and that's a really exciting opportunity. Um, I think in a lot of ways, the, the progress that, that the center has been critical to in catalyzing new conversations and reducing stigma has been accelerated in the pandemic and people are, are talking about stress and depression in ways that they weren't before. And that also opens up opportunities to um, to get into to parts of um, the community and, and collaborate with other other parts of campus and in ways that that weren't possible before, um, and then sort of circling back to the the um, the commitment from um, uh, from uh, the Eisenberg family and other donors and from the university, uh, both both in terms of resources and also in supporting the depression center sort of moving into the next phase of, of maturation and becoming an independent unit that's better positioned to to collaborate broadly across campus um, and and in terms of providing new space and and uh, the the ability to, to bring in new faculty and we'll talk about that later but all those I think um, speak to an important commitment from an institutional level and and adds to the opportunity we have so I'm really excited to move forward with that and, and that work. I know Patty um, shares my vision for, for the work we can do and, and, and the impact we want to have. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know her uh, well, um, you're in for a treat and, and, and you'll love her. Um, she's uh, a professor of psychology and does, has done really remarkable work in, um, in, in, a, in her own research program and a number, number of other domains. Um, particularly in, in really establishing the clinical science program in, in psychology and, and really quickly making it into a, a national leader um, and in her work through mood lifters and, um, uh, uh, and, and pres president of societies um, nationally. Um, she has a really um, a great way of thinking about problems and, and had a knack for, for quickly um, operationally solving problems and, and making progress. So I was really grateful that she agreed to help me lead the Depression Center. And I'll pass it over to her to, um, to share a few words. Thank you, Srijan, for that kind introduction. Um, before I get started, I wanted to also take a moment to first personally thank John Graydon. John's support for me and Moodlifters has been helpful in numerous ways, but absolutely critical in two ways. 
first, as you all know, I'm not gonna tell you anything you don't know, John is a visionary. And his big pictures are a comprehensive view of the state of depression and bipolar research and treatment directly led to my coming up with the idea for mood lifters. As a neuroscientist by training, I didn't have sort of the big picture view that he had. And it's really been just an amazing eye-opening experience working with him. He has taught me so much. He also made it possible to bring to fruition with financial support of the center that was granted to the program via many donors, including the Eisenbergs. The other critical time point that John supported me was while I was leading the transition of our clinical psychology program to a clinical science program, where we have uh, rose very quickly in ranking, research productivity, clinical training excellence, and grant funding. So thank you, John. I hope you're on here. Um, Sarijan mentioned that he's hoping that I bring out my sort of out of the box or more big picture thinking that led to the creation of Mood Lifters and my leadership skills that helped with the successful transition of the clinical science area to the current, um, to the Depression Center 2.0, the Eisenberg Family Depression Center. And I'm very, very grateful that he asked me. Why? Because we still have lots, we, you, all of you, and me still have lots of work to do. I was painfully reminded of this just last month um, when I learned why I hadn't seen my neighbor who lives six doors down in a while. AJ was a regular person. He loved music. He had a big clumsy dog named Walter. He loved his friends and his family. He was proud of his ability to lay flooring despite chronic knee pain. Last month, AJ dropped Walter off, his big clumsy dog, at a friend's house. He proceeded to his girlfriend's house who had two little kids at home at the time and shot himself on her front lawn. AJ had never recovered from his son committing suicide two years before. And I can pretty much guarantee that his girlfriend and his children and his family will never completely recover e either. Stories like J AJ keep me up at night. They drive me every day. And I'm sure that's true for a lot of you, right? Numerous other people you probably hold in your heart are tragic that we've lost to, to these illnesses. Every time I hear about someone dying by suicide, I get this deep sense of sadness, a feeling of great responsibility and frustration, followed by drive, a commitment to try to do better, work harder, work smarter. Like Sarijan, that's what motivates me. It's not the publications, but publications are good. It's not the grant funding. It's not the prestige. It's not this amazing opportunity. It's that. It's AJ's of the world. And let, I want to be clear. It's not like I feel personally responsible directly for his death or the death of 10 people that will die by suicide in the United States while this retreat occurs in one and a half hours. I don't feel responsible. I don't feel guilty, but I feel responsible to try to make a difference. Why? Because like you, we've been at the very best places. I've been at some of the best institutions in the world. I was worked at NIH. I was at the best private university, Harvard, and now I'm at the best public university in the world, Michigan. And in my leadership roles, and in leadership roles in many places, and therefore it is ultimately my responsibility, and hopefully you feel the same way yours, for doing everything in my and your power to change the slope of the following graphs. This data might be familiar to many of you, but it keeps me remembering why we do what we do. Sreejan, do you mind? Okay, just to remind you that although we've done all this great work, depression rates continue to climb. And it's not just depression. It's, it's not like there's some particular thing. It's depression and it's uh, opioid abuse and so on. Next slide, please. And it's gotten even worse during COVID. We see it re increases across the board. There was a survey in the um, LSA staff, and again, about 80% of them reported increases of anxiety and depression. So it's not them, it's all of us now experiencing lots of these kinds of situations or feelings. Next slide. And it's not just a reporting bias. Like you saw in that first slide that it's a lot of young people reporting increases in depression. You might say, oh, they're just more comfortable sharing. I don't think so. We see increases in 
you know, 17 years of about 40% increases in suicide. Next slide. And this is in the contrast to every other field in medicine where you're seeing decreases in morbidity and mortality. We, have, we haven't made the progress that other fields have. So that's the bad news. The good news is that the vision of John to start the center, the amazing development officers working with the visionary donors such as the Eisenbergs and the Prectors, the UM Medical School, and so many have given us what I, I got the goosebumps, literally, if you could see me, I have the goosebumps, I'm so excited, um, have given us an unprecedented opportunity that I don't believe is available anywhere else in the world. And that is reflected in John's vision to make this comprehensive vision. And now it's gonna be reflected in Sreejan's vision for the Eisenberg Family Depression Center to cat catalyze collaborative research, as John has suggested, but to do it even bigger or bolder and smarter and more efficiently. Why? Because we have to, because of AJ and everyone else we care about, to make the big discoveries, to take the risks, and to look for those high impact, hard to find game changing results. So I'm honored and excited to be, have been afforded this opportunity to work with Srijan. He's an amazing person. Um, it's been just, we've, I've known him for a long time and we, we just get along and share a similar vision. And, and I hope that you will join us in accomplishing this mission that Srijan's about to share with you. And together we will change those lines. That's my hope is that we change the slope, the trajectories of those slopes. Thanks again, Srijan, for inviting me to join you. And um, I look forward to hearing your vision. Thanks, Fatty. That was that was really nice. And, and I've been it's been great working with you um, for the past couple of months. And I'm really looking forward to all the work we're doing together. Um, Patty and I have spent a lot of the last um, two and a half months or so um, on a listening tour. Uh, uh, I think uh, we've talked to, I think, 60, 65 people um, individually in small groups, um, both within U of M and outside. And, and it's been really exciting to hear people's thoughts and, and ideas. And, um, and I appreciate from all of you that took the time to meet and, and, and talk. I think uh, a lot of different ideas but came out, but, but some really major themes emerged. And I, those really, uh, uh, fit with the opportunity that we talked about earlier and that Patty talked about and and really drive the um, specific areas of investment and and goals that that I'll lay out later. Um, I think one of the the major themes that came out is that um, for difficult problems that we've we've struggled to solve, like um, uh, like uh, depression and mental health more broadly, um, breakthroughs and and really big solutions almost always come from the edge of fields from uh, uh, interactions between people who don't normally talk, who are um, leaders in their own field, but but for maybe the first time interacting with with others, and it's at it, that at those cross sections and intersections that um, uh, that really important work can be done. And at the the University of Michigan, with our structure and and complicated um, nature of how things are organized, centers are really well positioned to to work at those intersections and to catalyze um, conversations that wouldn't otherwise happen and, and bring about those collaborations and that. And there was a real um, eagerness and desire to see the Depression Center working at those, at those intersections. Um, more specifically, another area that came out, um, a theme that, that people were really interested in and thought the Depression Center could do real good right now is, um, is in, in um, thinking about um, prevention, I think from a, a lot of the the conversations and and stigma reduction that's been done um, a, a lot by the depression center, and then really with the pandemic, there's a a new um, an enhanced understanding of how uh, important stress and and particularly you know work family conflict and other stress is in in our lives, and how um, how much of an impact it can have, and how important um, things like social connection and and sleep and, and physical activity are in, in maintaining our, our health. So that opens up um, a, a way of moving sort of upstream and, and not just focusing on the disease once it's in full bloom, but, but really taking steps to help um, 
reduce the onset and, and working uh, both with, with communities at higher risk, but also more broadly nudging our lifestyles and our workplaces and our campuses and communities to be to be healthier. And, and, and people had ideas on a lot of different ideas on how to get there, but, um, but a way to make a bigger sort of public health impact um, um, by taking a, more of a prevention approach. There was also uh, sort of a corollary to that um, with the increased awareness and interest in, in mental health, there was a real interest in incorporating that into a lot of other research that's going on that may, might not be primarily mental health, but, um, uh, but we can add on um, measures on how mental health affects a, a whole array of things in terms of other diseases and, and, um, and topics people are studying ar around campus and, and one and, and interest in doing that through, through technology. So that'll also drive uh, uh, some of the work in areas that we'll focus on initially. Um, in addition to the, the listening tour, um, we also put out a survey and we're grateful for the 60 people who, who uh, completed the survey and, and uh, we asked a, a, a few different questions and, and particularly the open-ended questions people wrote really beautifully about um, their ideas about what's worked in the depression center before and, and how to be most effective going forward and, and other centers that have been, um, uh, that could be models for us. Uh, this is this is just one question that people um, answered on on what would be most valuable about among uh, fifteen choices, and then people wrote in other choices. These were the 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 top half that that emerged, um, and you could see again a lot of synergy with what what we heard in the listening tour and and our initial ideas about um, supporting. Uh, projects and particularly interdisciplinary part projects, finding ways of catalyzing them. And, and all eight of these will be areas that we'll um, focus on and, and support um, in the Depression Center and, and really uh, uh, fit with, with, our, with our, our thinking. As part of the, the survey, we um, uh, uh, offered uh, uh, Zigerman's gift certificates and, and the two winners are, are Alyssa and Bethany for um, so thank you for everyone, and particularly the two of you for filling out the surveys. Hopefully your, your uh, gift cards are, are on their way, and hopefully you can send us you know, pictures of you enjoying the, the delicious treats, and we'll throw them on the website. But thank you for everyone for filling out the survey. Um, so with all that um, input uh, from the listening tour, the survey um, has helped us shape our, our broader mission um, in, in sort of two parts to, to catalyze um, at that intersection, the, the interdisciplinary work and collaborations that, that really have potential to produce high impact. And then just as importantly, translate that. And, and this is consistent with a lot of work um, going on with the, the, the internal depression programs is to translate that into improving the lives of, of, of people suffering and their, their families and the communities. And hopefully with, with the, the, all that work, we can get to the state that, that Patty laid out and that where we've really um, made a meaningful impact in lowering the burden of, of uh, depression, bipolar disorder, and, and help reduce the suffering and help people's lives. And, and keeping that sort of um, vision and goal in mind and really supporting um, initiatives and projects that have uh, the potential to, to do that, um, to help us get there. Um, we have um, uh, uh, several really um, highly productive and, and um, uh, highly functioning programs within the Depression Center um, uh, that are doing great work. And hopefully we can, by pulling in new collaborations and investing in different ways, help accelerate their work towards that, um, towards that vision. Um, we'll be uh, also starting um, uh, new programs and, and particularly investing in ways uh, that, uh, that can help us uh, um, catalyze research in, in the broader community and bring bring teams together. And, and these are the, the sort of initial um, cores and, and ways that we hope to, to do that work. Um, the first and, and probably broadest is, is um, project development. So um, we're hoping to, uh, both through sort of traditional seminars and, and maybe some newer uh, ways of, of bringing people together through lightning talks and speed networking, and then more informal um, collaborations, uh, uh, ways of people to, to have conversations and interact, to bring people from across campus together. And this also um, 
uh, plays into the, the new space that we'll have at NCRC. And we're really thinking about designing that space to be, um, to get away from sort of the traditional cubicles and offices to be a place where people um, naturally interact and come together and hopefully want to come to. And, and really through those um, events and ideas have people talk to, talk to other uh, uh, researchers and clinicians uh, around campus that they wouldn't normally talk to and hopefully come up with new ideas. And then importantly, we wanna pair that with, um, uh, with a project team. So, um, so a set of uh, project managers and, and grant writers and graphic designers and other people who can help bring those initial interesting ideas and, and um, collaborations to fruition into real projects that have um, that make real impact and 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 get moved closer to getting grants and um, and also pair that with with some of our internal pilot mechanisms to really catalyze the work and and help bring um, a lot of the interesting ideas we have to to fruition. A second area that we'll focus on initially is is building on a lot of the themes of, of pe what people are interested in. And, and there was broad recognition of the um, real potential of technology and particularly mobile technology, um, uh, both in terms of assessing our patients and, and other people around um, uh, around the, the campus and, and country in, in important ways in, in tracking their, their sleep in particular, but also um, newer ways of, of measuring um, activity and skin conductance and, and, and incorporating that into, into other studies and also the, the potential of mobile technology to, to deliver care and interventions in, in ways that, that are innovative. And uh, all this work is, there, there seems to be great interest and in, uh, there is, but there's a, a pretty high technical barrier to, to getting involved in that, that space. So one of our goals is to, to reduce that, that barrier to make it much easier to uh, incorporate more mobile technology um, and then also develop um, tools to uh, take the, the really rich data that can come out of it in a pipeline to convert that into meaningful and easily identifiable and understandable um, output. So uh, we'll build a team uh, around that to, to help facilitate that area of research. Um, the third area that we'll focus on initially is, is um, building on these uh, high value databases. I think we're really in a, a sort of golden age of, of, um, of data that there's incredibly um, rich and potentially valuable data sets that have been developed both internally through in the Depression Center and elsewhere at Michigan. Um, uh, and, and maybe even more uh, profoundly nationally and internationally that that uh, uh, that we could potentially tap into, and 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 there's there's really smart um, faculty and staff and students who have important questions and hypotheses that could potentially be answered by these data sets. But there's a there's a a barrier there that um, um, that we need to to uh, get over and, and and bridge. I think the uh, there's there's access to data sets uh, and technical. Um, barriers to how to understand and actually um, work with the data sets. And I think if we, one of the goals of this core is to, to help help bridge that divide and, and help people come in with interesting ideas and, and hypotheses and, and identify the data sets that are most valuable to them and um, with, with curators and analysts help answer those questions. And I think there's real potential of making high impact advances with um, relatively um, little work and, and maybe even more broadly uh, changing the mindset of some of our researchers and particularly junior researchers and how they how they first approach problems and in thinking about where the data might already be available rather than collecting new data. Um, so all these are our are, are initial areas of focus, but we want to be nimble with these and and um, really invest in, in what works and and have strong metrics about how things are working and and be iterative in our process of, of evaluation. Hopefully, as new exciting areas emerge, we'll, we'll, um, we'll add on or, or trade out um, different core areas. Um, in addition to this, we're uh, planning over the next you know, five years or so to recruit faculty um, uh, with, an, with a focus on depression bipolar disorder into, uh, uh, into the university um, between you know, four and five faculty um, 
we'll partner with with psychiatry um, and hopefully other departments and schools around campus to to identify and bring in um, the most talented people working in these areas, but also just broadly in 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 the areas of depression, bipolar, and and hopefully that'll help um, again take take our work and take this to a new level. So. Um, so that's sort of a, a high level overview of, of the directions we're going. There's a lot of details and, and um, details to work out and, and, and details I haven't mentioned underlying this, but um, hopefully that gives you an idea of where we're going and, and sort of the broader direction all towards the, the goal of really having an impact in, in, in ways that we, we have an opportunity to. So um, I'll stop with the formal presentation there. Um, I'd love to, you know, take any questions you have. Please put the questions you have in the chat, um, and and um, me and Patty will, will go through those. And uh, then I want to spend sort of the, the bulk of the, the rest of the time in our breakout sessions and and give people a chance to within sort of that broader framework that we laid out how we can be most effective and and what we should be celebrating in five years um, if we do this right and and what resources and and plans we should put in place to. Um, to get there, so um, uh, so maybe we'll we'll take questions for a few minutes and then and then move to our our breakout rooms. So, thanks, Patty. I don't know if you've. Yeah, I'm in chat. If anyone has uh, questions, could you put them in chat, please? You should be able to chat them. Yeah, just a quick question, Patty. This is Amy. Who do we send the questions to? It should go to the hosts. Okay. So, Srijan, I got a question here. Um, it said, what's the anticipated number of staff that need to be hired to achieve this plan? And does the center have a budget that will allow for rapid staff expansion? Um, thanks, Stephanie. Yeah, I think that's a, a really good question. I think the uh, uh, um, we're hoping and we're expanding the staff is is really one of the the initial uh, focal areas and what we'll we'll do pretty rapidly in the next um, uh, next twelve months. Uh, uh, I'm anticipating somewhere between uh, twelve and twenty new staff um, will come on board and to help these and and uh, to help with these cores and then our, our existing functioning as a as a center um, and and. And that's that's how we put our budget together, uh, both sort of with uh, Michigan Medicine and and with our external funding. Um, Stephanie, I can't see the questions actually. Um, so uh, some folks had sent it directly to me instead of the the host. So, um, I just had a really quick question. I just wanted to just ask: Is is um, terrific work? Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Srijan. Your themes resonate well with the U of M anti-racist cluster hire that's going on with the School of Information and Learning Health Sciences. Are you planning to have the Depression Center be a part of that? Yeah, I think um, that would be great. I think we weren't um, set up or organized enough for the first uh, set of hires through the, um, the provost initiative, but um, I've had conversations with um, the provost office and, and, and they'll be and we have an NIH grant out um, on that theme as well. So I'm hoping in, in future waves of those hires that we could be involved and, and both both towards um, doing work on, on anti-racism and also as a, as a way of really connecting and building stronger bonds with other schools around campus. I think um, information and I know is very involved. There's a lot in LSNA. And, and, and so I think, um, uh, bringing in people who are bridging those divides would would be great, and uh, in addition to doing that work. So thanks for that. Thanks for that question. Great, thank you. A question I had earlier um, from a um, a member was, are, do you still plan to be involved with the National Network of Depression Center? Um, thanks. Yeah, I think uh, it, it, yeah, definitely, and I think it's it's a really great. Um, uh, opportunity to uh, uh, to sort of broaden our impact. I think it's it's a, a really uh, uh, ready made place to uh, uh, to expand ideas and to really do things at scale, particularly with larger 
sample sizes in, in important ways. And, and I think there's a lot of opportunity to build on that. Um, I think there's areas that there's been really interesting progress in the last few years in sharing um, uh, common metrics we have and, and potential of, of doing that even more with um, shared work in the electronic health records and, and sort of uh, building on that and, and, and bringing together, maybe not for every project, all the, all the centers in, in the NNDC, but, but using that as a way to find partners for specific projects. And again, I think the more we can do things at scale, the more impact we can have. And, and the NNDC is a great vehicle for that. So I'm excited about that and, and, and excited about other people's ideas of, of using those relationships. One of the questions I got earlier that I think that I'll go ahead and address is how are we going to facilitate collaboration? Um, we're coming up with all kinds of different ways of doing it. And if you have any great ideas of how you've had organizations that have helped you collaborate in novel ways, like what initiated your best collaborations? How did that happen? Was there any structure involved? I'd be delighted to hear about it. And you can find me anywhere on the Depression Center for to email. Um, me about that. But some of the ideas that we've heard, uh, one actually came from one of the, the talks that we had was these lightning talks that um, Sarijan mentioned. Um, there was a member who told me about an organization in which they, um, they first did flash talks about a minute long or three minutes long on the, the web. And then they were invited to get together around virtual tables. They eventually uh, decided which tables that people wanted to collaborate, and then they got together to write grants and submit them to their organization. And that just sounded like so fun that we could get people together and think about these in novel ways and then have uh, our, uh, our team, maybe perhaps our liaison committee or other members of the Depression Center, evaluate the proposals and actually uh, support them. Um, other examples we've heard that I think are really interesting, exciting is the Alzheimer's group. Um, they get together for a week or two and actually have, instead of a traditional conference, a work meeting in which they build projects around existing databases and things like that. So we're coming up, we're going to come up with all kinds of interesting, hopefully fun ways. Um, one of them, uh, we started talking about sort of like Shark Tank um, version of collaboration. I'm not sure we'll go that far, but it's fun to think about and think outside the box about how to get people to come up with novel ideas. And part of the reason that we want to really push this is what we've learned um, around the science of science, right? Is that a lot of the best discoveries come at the intersection and interface to fields. And so we wanna promote that as much as possible. Great. Um, I see something from uh, Megan in the chat about the um, efforts of curating data sets shouldn't be redundant with other um, other efforts, and, and that's, um, we totally agree, um, both, I think for, for all of those, all the domains we're talking about, the data curation, the mobile technology, um, uh, some of this work in, in project development, there's really good work going on nationally, but also internally that, that um, they're sort of cousins to all of those um, cores and initiatives in different parts of campus, and, and we're trying to set up to, to be as synergistic as possible with with those existing resources, so we really add value and and um, and take advantage of what's already out there. So um, we're uh, we're trying to build things in, th in that way. And as you as you you know come across or know about different resources that are already there, I think um, we'd love to to hear more and, and make sure we're working with them. Um, and then there's so much uh, there's it's such a big place here at Michigan. There's so much going on that. I think a real function that we can have is to um, to be a, a repository for all the resources that are out there and and connect members to to the right resources, even if it's not something we're directly providing. So thank you for that question, and hopefully, um, you know, you can be involved in in helping to um, identify important resources for members. Another question just came in from Steve. What role do you see for studying interventions and in innovative clinical trials? Um, yeah, that's great. I think it's a, a I think it, a, a real role. And I think, um, I think it, it, that that covers a lot of different areas. And, and 
I think we um, are critically important for depression. So I think it it depends on the the specific areas. I think as long as it's um, related to that broad goal and of making an impact, um, and and the types of interventions and work that we're really well positioned to um, to move the field forward and lead at Michigan. Um, and there's definitely a lot of interventions that that fall into that area. So um, I think we want to focus on areas where where we can lead, but um, but within that, there's uh, there's huge potential and and important types of um, interventions and uh, and trials that, that we should support. Um, as a follow-up question about that, do you uh, have a particular interest in prevention in, in those kind of trials? Yeah, I think so. I think um, it, I, I have a personal influence interest in that and I think it was it's clear that there's a lot of really interesting uh, interesting ideas and 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 uh, uh, faculty and, and and students particularly who who are interested in that so I think that's an area of of real um, urgent need and and potential and and I would love you know um, interesting ideas for that to be part of our initial work with a project development team and 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 uh, really working at that area of, of prevention and um, uh, from a public health perspective there's there's a real um, uh, interest and in, in opportunity there. So, so definitely that, that, that is a, an early area of, of focus for us. Okay, another question. Do you see a role for the depression center? Um, I can't read the whole thing for some reason. Um, let me see, oh wait. Uh, do you see a role for the depression center in social determinants of health and mental health? Yeah, definitely. I think um, you know, related to the prevention, I think I think um, there's um, there's really huge potential there in in, in addressing those, um, given the how prevalent our our diseases have become, and and investing in in that areas and really improving them um, can help with disparities and and more broadly reduce the the uh, uh, progression to to depression bipolar disorder. In other areas, and I think again, there's huge collaborative potential working on the social determinants of health with um, partners on campus and 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 outside. So um, that's an area that I think have been has been understudied and in, um, in in the past, and somewhere we can make real progress. So um, yeah, that's great. So I, I'm seeing it's 11:18. So I think it's a good time to move into the breakout rooms, and you know, I'd there's other good questions, and and I'd love to. Um, answer them and have more discussions offline, but maybe we can move to the breakout room. So sort of in the context of all the things we've been talking about, um, how the Depression Center can um, make progress and, and what we should be celebrating in five years. And um, we will give about half an hour to uh, uh, to those discussions and then come back at um, uh, 11.49 or so to, to report back on what's come out of those sessions. Um, we have moderators in each of those rooms and, and a nice setup to, to share ideas. So um, maybe I'll pass it over to you, Stephanie, to, to take us to the breakouts. Sure. So um, everybody is gonna go to a breakout room. Please do not leave. We wanna hear your ideas. Um, there will be a moderator in each room. So it might just take me one minute for us to get your moderator, but um, we'll see you in just a minute. There's me and Hi, Cheryl. We could argue about who had the best breakout. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Of course. Yeah. I wasn't kidding. I, but <laughs> we'll see. It, while waiting for everybody else, I just want to comment that I, I thought the array of comments in the one breakout room that I was in are terrific. And when they're all put together, man, is it going to be a uh, next effort to sort out priorities? What breakout room were you in, John? Uh, hi, Mike. <laughs> I was in the one with, I don't know that they had names, um, um, with Stephanie Salazar uh, moderating it. And it was mostly uh, just to talk about what we're celebrating and uh, and it had a whole bunch of great suggestions, including uh, money and AI and uh, collaborations and, and a feeling that there should be sessions like this uh, that are scheduled regularly. I was in room 
four and um, five with Taylor and Will on different uh, channels. So uh, I I don't know. I I I think they were all good. Um, so Stephanie, are we all back from the breakouts now, or? Um, it looks like everyone should be coming back. Um, yep, I think everybody's back. Okay. Um, so uh, why don't we then start formally sharing? Stephanie, do you want to start with um, with your room and um, giving a, a, a you know short one two minute recap of what what you guys discussed? Sure. So Dr. Graydon talked about it a bit. He was in my group, but um, really when we were talking about what we should be celebrating in the next five years, some of the themes that came up and some of the most popular ideas were really about um, new collaborations, um, diversity in hiring, um, and community impact were really important to folks. And so both our local community, but also the broader community and uh, sort of a worldwide impact. But there was also we need um, some of the things we need for that are financial resources, um, development, um, and then internal collaborations. So we both need those to be successful, but also that was another thing that we would hope to be celebrating in five years is um, with our campus community, with our local community, um, and the broader community in general. So those are some of the things. That's great. John seemed to think that money is particularly important there, so. <laughs> um, uh, that's great. And then uh, maybe we can just go through the room. So um, I think Rosie Taylor... wanted, to, oh, I think Rosie had wanted to go. Okay, she had sure. Oh, yeah. sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. So our, can you, am I unmuted? Okay. So our breakout room, we had an extensive discussion, but just to summarize um, some of the highlights in terms of what we would be celebrating in five years. Um, we talked about um, moving from just doing research into trans, uh, moving into a translational focus. Um, there was a lot of, there was some discussion about the lack of diversity in faculty and um, that being um, uh, important and working with community. Um, there was also discussion about from various people about doing more with the younger population. So um, there's a lot of research that's happening and a lot of developments, but it's not necessarily being done at the ground level in terms of pediatrics and primary care and how can we quickly translate research findings into um, actual clinical practice. Um, also some discussion about um, interdisciplinary collaboration, both with research and non-research. For example, there's a lot of activity around um, that's happening right now with wellness and um, the depression center currently um, is a leader in you know, depression. So couldn't we partner with, for example, the wellness office, et cetera, to share our expertise um, in terms of supporting faculty, staff, and learners. And then um, finally, there was some discussion about the way that the depression center could help with our, our basic science um, research that is occurring and helping with um, collaboration, um, interdisciplinary collaboration with basic science. So those were some highlights, but um, yeah. <laughs> oh, and then um, in terms of uh, how can we do this, um, some of the things that we talked about are possibly having some more um, it, work groups, for example, for early career faculty who are interested in different topics. Um, that was one of the ideas discussed and adopting a learning health systems model. So I'll stop there. What was that last one, Rosie? Say that again. Oh yeah, adopting a learning health systems model. Um, Which is, can you define that for everyone? Uh, a learning health, uh, we need to bring clinic. Okay, Melvin, can you uh, talk about that? <laughs> Sorry. Are you still on, Melvin? Yeah, thank you. No, I mean, so we have a special department here within the medical school and school of medicine here, where that's a learning health uh, systems. And so essentially, uh, the learning health systems, um, you know, takes what you're what you're learning in the clinics and, and in, in a kind of circular and linear manner, uh, adapts the research um, that is being discovered in the research program, implementing that in the clinics, learning the consequences of that, adapting that again. So it's a dynamic interaction with the clinical care system uh, and the researchers and the community. So it involves the community, involves the researchers, and involves the clinicians. And, um, and, it, and it, it moves the, the, the needle forward, finding out what works. I mean, what is, what is working in, the, you know, in, our, in our system as it is now? And who is doing it good? How can we discover who's doing the best work? 
amplify what they're doing, change the policies. And so it's, it, it involves the whole health system as a whole. Thank you. It's a lot of people off camp and out of campus might not have heard about that. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, Taylor, do you want to summarize your group? Absolutely. So um, a lot of similar themes based off of what Stephanie and Rosie have already shared. Um, but in addition, um, what we should be celebrating five years, reverse in suicide rate trends, um, more research related to poverty and social determinants of mental health, um, lots of increased interdisciplinary collaboration, and also increased community participation and our participatory and collaborative efforts. And this is across the entire spectrum of our work, um, as well as more accessible treatments for depression and related disorders and culturally tailored interventions. So those were some of our biggest themes for what we should be celebrating in five years. Um, and then for what we need, we need to do to get there, um, more engagement with communities affected by depression. Um, so looking at community-based participatory research, having centralized research cores. Um, some folks in our, our breakout room identified having a committee to guide research and funding needs with, with a contact person to NIH, NIMH, et cetera, to create a conduit that informs NIH of any funding gaps. Um, as well as increased donor funding plus revenue generating activities at the center. Um, so those were just some of the, the different themes that we saw in our breakout group. That's great. Um, anyone else from Taylor's room wanna add on to that? I just added in the thought that uh, whatever we can do to enhance the discipline of uh, standard of care and diagnosis and treatment for mood disorders, uh, sort of a larger theme. Uh, but uh, something that five years from now, I hope we are celebrating that we, we have that uh, better defined. Great, that makes sense. Great. I'll just um, add one other quick thing was the, um, I think there were a couple comments that emphasized comorbidity and acknowledging that as a, a huge central role in both the suicide rates we see in depression, but also the presentation and trajectory of depression. That's great. Thanks, Sarah. Um, Will, do you want to talk about your room? Yeah, for sure. Um, and lots of overlap with what's been said, but some of the things that were pointed out um, idea of linking programming like Zero to Thrive um, that works on the you know, very early prevention mental health programs with um, some of our other outreach programming talked about that our outreach team usually is mostly, you know, fifth grade and up, um, but having, you know, contiguous programming uh, all the way through and, and more uh, interaction there, um, having diverse revenue streams to support uh, the different types of research that we want to do. Um, talked about like sort of in terms of everyday mental health, like what is the mental health equivalent of fluoride in the water um, is, is how it was phrased. And uh, one, one answer that was given to that was um, social emotional learning curriculum, which has been, has been kicked off and starting um, in our schools. Uh, let's see, growth of growth of prevention programs, growth of outreach programs, uh, having a more diverse faculty. Um, and then this is a really interesting one. Um, so increased uh, intellectual property portfolio or increased IP portfolio with the development of just-in-time mental health treatments and preventions. Um, so I guess the person who said that can elaborate if they want, but. Uh, she went into some some pretty interesting ideas, uh, you know, as we as we continue to develop treatments um, and have content and things that can help people um, having a portfolio of them that's available, that's easily accessible uh, quickly. And how will we get there again? Lots of lots of different ideas. Um, I think one that sort of sums up a ton of it is foundationally, we need to understand what are the new priorities, mission pillars of Depression Center 2.0. Um, and also not, uh, I should rephrase this, uh, 
but to not throw away what already works and also develop new and innovative strategies um, to improve outcomes. Great. Uh, yeah, I really like the fluoride analogy and the, the just in time. And anyone else from Will's room that that um, had additional thoughts? Um, great. Uh, um, Lizelle, did you have um, feedback in your room? Yeah, um, and I'm going to actually have Jeremy share on our behalf. Okay. Yeah, so I know we're running out of time, so I'll try and uh, be as brief as possible. But the beginning of the conversation really centered on uh, access to treatment and care. Uh, that was a, uh, a very, um, very constant theme in our discussion. And then trying to figure out how to get there. Uh, one of the main solutions, you know, there are two main solutions, obviously engaging and growing the donor base was our most popular uh, sticky that was voted on. Uh, but trying to figure out strategies to improve primary care uh, and, and treat depression. Uh, but there was a really good point brought up about um, trying to make sure that there was a collective voice uh, to try and enact change and have a champion to, to deliver and drive the passion to build a team and to you know, create the resources and uh, really enact what the members' priorities were toward that uh, changes. Great, thanks, Jeremy. Um, other input from from that room, from the folks that were part of Jeremy's room. All right, good. Um, uh, did I, Stephanie? Did I cover all the rooms? Or, yeah. Okay, great. Well, good. That sounds like really some really good ideas there. So we'll collect all the all the sticky notes and the the summaries of those rooms and um, and if you have additional feedback, please feel free to email me or Patty or or anyone on the team, um, we'll, we'll collate all this and um, uh, get a summary and, and some of the, the slides that I shared out to you guys and, and next steps um, in the next few days. But thank you so much for, for joining us and for sharing those great ideas. And, and uh, I hope you can see that we're really excited about the next phase and, and hope that, that you are too. And, and, and um, looking forward to moving together, moving forward together with all of you. So, um, so thanks for joining. Thank you for coming, everybody. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you.